Hello, pretty calculus students. We are going to analyze a polar graph today, and we're looking at the equation r equals 6 minus 5 cosine theta. And we're looking for domain, range, symmetry, boundedness, and max r value. Now, max r value is something a little bit new. Domain range symmetry and boundedness is something that um, that's, should be for already familiar to you since we have analyzed lots of different functions um, with those four characteristics. Okay? So one thing we need to know about the domain of a polar graph is that it is written in terms of all the possible values for theta, okay? In other words, the domain of a function is the input of that function. So the input here is theta, and the output is r, so, or the radius. Okay, so the range here would be possible values for r. So let's first start with our domain, and we look here at the function 6 minus 5 cosine of theta. And you ask yourself, what can you put into for theta? Can you put anything? A negative number, a positive number, zero, really large numbers, really small numbers. And it turns out that for cosine, everything works because the domain of cosine is all real numbers. So in this particular case, we can say that the domain is everything from negative infinity to positive infinity. The only time that it's not going to be all real numbers and I'll write a note here. Note that tangent of theta, cotangent of theta, secant of theta, and cosecant of theta would not be all real numbers. Okay. The reason for this is that because these functions, they have a, a, a fraction in them. It's tangent is sine over cosine cotangent is cosine over sine and when you have a fraction in your function there's a possibility for it to be zero there's a possibility for the denominator I should say to be zero which would make it undefined but for sine and cosine you're always going to get negative infinity to positive infinity okay. so let's look at the range now and the range here are all possible values for r and it's a little bit harder to see when we graph it so let me um, let me graph it first so that you can see what it looks like 6 minus 5 cosine theta. Graph. And it looks like my graph here isn't quite big enough. My window's not big enough. So there's some curves here, but I think there's, some, there's a little bit more to the story. So let me increase the window here. And graph. It looks like it's still not big enough, so let me make it just a little bit bigger. Let's go to 15 here for both x and y. So you have this graph here, and our question is, what's the largest possible value for r and the smallest possible value for r? And it's not entirely obvious, so let me just draw this graph onto regular old whiteboard here. So the sketch of the graph looks like this. Okay. And you can see that in the when you're at this point right here, this little hook in here, uh, R is very small in there. But when you go when you extend out here, R could be very large. And we don't really know exactly how big or small R is. So we're gonna have to um, convert we're gonna have to convert this graph into a function graph. And then and then look there. Okay, so I'll write a note here for the range. We're in a graph in function mode and find min or max. Okay. So I'm going to take my graph and I'm going to change this into function mode. a lot of stuff in there and clear all that out and I'm gonna graph the exact same thing but instead of using uh, R it's gonna be Y and instead of 
theta is going to be x. Oops, phi cosine x in a graph. And you can see here that I get a series of waves. So I'm going to find the min and the max values of that. Because the min and the max here for y is really the min and the max for r. So draw a little sketch here. And let's find the min and the max. Second, calc, go into here. Let's find the maximum first. Let's move it closer to the tip. And that tells me that the max, and again, I care mostly about the y value here, is 11. And then we'll find what the min is. So we'll do that one more time. This time looking for the minimum. And this gives me 1. Okay. So the max is 11, the min is 1. And for this graph here is really a graph for the y values is r. Okay? So when I have that, now I can conclude here that the range is between 1 and 11. Let me put a box around these things here. And because the range here has a lower bound and it has an upper bound, the boundedness, we can say that it's bounded in both directions, below and above. We can also see from the polar graph here that it's got a, a symmetry over the x-axis. And we might have to prove that just to be sure, but it does have a symmetry over the x-axis. And finally, we get, we get to this point here, which is the, R, the maximum R value which is an indication of how far from the origin can it be. So let me uh, give ourselves, let me get some more space here. And so we're looking for the maximum R value. And the definition here is these, the farthest distance on the graph from the origin. Okay. So in other words, in this graph here, how far can I possibly, can I get, is this the farthest point? Or maybe this is as far as I can get, or this is as far as I can get. I don't really know. Um, this is just, these are our, our values. It could be positive or they could be negative but I just want to know how far can I get from the origin and still stay on the graph. So the best way to do that is just looking at the range here for the possible values of r. Okay? Um, the, the smallest number represents how far I can, what's this, how far I can get from it. And the biggest number in this case also represents that. Now in some scenarios it might be the, this number might be a negative. Okay? So, the def so the way we find the r value is to take absolute value of lower bound and the absolute value of the upper bound and then the max r value is the larger of these two So it's the larger of the absolute value of the lower bound or the absolute value of the upper bound. So in this case, absolute value of 1, absolute value of 11. 11 is bigger. So 11 is the max R value. Okay? And it just represents how far away from the origin can we possibly get.
And so there we have it, sort of an, an analysis of a polar graph um, in using domain, range, but domain is in terms of theta, range is in terms of the radius, uh, symmetry, we talked about that in, an, in the previous video, boundedness, and then finally a new characteristic of a graph which is the maximum R value or the farthest distance from the origin. And this all together tells, gives us a pretty nice picture and gives us and, and a lot of details about the graph of a polar function.